she says it's hard to get, but actually she comes here for a minute.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Ohio Gosimas. Now that was a wake up, wasn't it? And we all woke up early here today because of the time change. But anyway, welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Torrance. This is the fourth Sunday in Lent, and it is also UMCOR Sunday. UMCOR, U-M-C-O-R. That's United Methodist Committee on Relief. And if you want information about UMCOR, UMCOR, the Committee on Relief, is everywhere in the world helping those in need, especially those who are victims of natural disasters, whatever. Um, we have had a great brush fire in Texas, and I'm sure a lot of people are suffering over there. And so UMCOR is there absolutely helping. And when you donate to UMCOR, all the money that you give goes to the relief effort. Nothing is used for administrative purposes. What is used for administrative purposes is what we give on special Sundays like today, when we call it the UMCOR Sunday. So if you want more information, in our lobby, you will find these blue sheets, which will give you information on how UMCOR works. And that's a great thing that our church does. Also, um, this morning is, I think, the final day when we have to submit our order for lilies, Easter lilies. You know, on Easter, we have the lilies up here. So if you haven't ordered yet, please do so, and you will find the order form on the insert in our bulletin. Please order your lilies, and you can, you can write um, whoever you want to honor or remember with your lilies, and we will print them on the bulletin uh, on Easter. So, now just the usual announcement that I give. Uh, if you have your cell phones, mobile devices, iPads, pagers, if you still have pagers with you, please place them on silent mode. And like I say, um, if we catch you with your mobile device ringing, next Sunday you will be here doing the announcements, okay? So also, um, if you have a special prayer requests or praises that you want lifted up, just fill up the pink cards on the pew racks, or if you are tuning in on the internet, place them on the comment section and we'll get them to the pastor in time. And uh, thank you to all who have already signed up to join the work of our church. If you feel like singing, join the choir. If you feel like doing visitation, join our um, committee that does that. Um, it's, what do we call that? The caring ministries, there you go. So um, if you want to put stamps on the cards that we sent to our homebound members, you can do that. So just fill up the yellow sheets also in our lobby and uh, tell us where you want to contribute in the work of our church. And with all that, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pass the peace of Christ with one another. And now, to prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in the responsive call to worship. Lenten travelers, the journey is long. Let us take a moment to rest and breathe. Holy God, we find our rest. Sometimes the road is easy, and we bask in the warmth of the light who guides us.
some days we delight in the joy of journeying together on this road. Today, let us come into the light together as we learn to love God and one another through the twists and turns of our Lenten journey. And please rise as you're able for the continuing of our opening hymn. We should, somebody said we should add youth and children. <laughs> okay. okay. How you doing? Tired, right? Get up one hour early, right? I didn't. You didn't? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. So last week I asked you to do something special. Do you remember? Yes, I did. Uh huh. Have you done it? Yeah. Okay. How how did you do it? Who forgave you? You, you. Yeah. Who? You didn't do it. Okay. Okay. Your friend, huh? What did he do? Okay. <laughs> Okay, but I want to apologize to you guys because, you know, forgiveness is really hard things to do, right? Really, even sometimes I cannot do it, 
but uh, you know, even I can do it and I ask you to do it, it's not fair, right? So I'm sorry. And you should say? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You guys still learning the Lord's Prayer? How far you go? All the way? Really? You did? You... Okay. They are learning the Lord's Prayer with the, what? What do you call it? Sign language? Right, right, right. So I think, you know, that's really great that you guys learn in, in different language the Lord's Prayer because you are able to interact with other friends, not able to you know, hear, right? And also, I think, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, the hardest part of the Lord's Prayer is... Exactly. Okay, let me read it to you. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right? Right? That's one sentence. It's not like a two separate sentences. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us. Okay? So it's connected. In order to, for you to get forgive, what should you do? Forgive others. That's the deal. That's the deal we have. So in order to get forgive, get to receive forgiveness, that we should forgive others. So really encourage you this week, still, if there is a chance that you are able to forgive others, then do it. Okay? I forgive you. Right? Forgive. And then there's time that you need to say sorry, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's S. S is, sign language S is here. So S rubbing in your heart. S. I'm sorry. Okay? Can you do it this week? Okay? If there's time that you need to forgive, then what should you do? I forgive you. And then there's time that you need to say sorry, then I'm sorry. Okay? Okay. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for our children and youth in our church community. God, we ask you to pour out your amazing blessings upon our children. It's really hard to forgive others, but help us to have a courage to forgive others and help us to have a courage to say, I'm sorry. Thank you for the, all the blessings that you pour out upon our church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. You don't wanna go? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, church. You still sleepy mood? One hour early? Yeah, I was not able to sleep last night. I got up like one o'clock in the morning and then I don't know, because I stressed out with the time change. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, a few announcements. Alto flowers. Oh, we have a long list. Alto flowers given by Gail and Kirk Lazo honoring the birthdays of their children. Marbella, Ma, Marbella's and Solana's seventh birthday on March 9. Rizal, ninth birthday on March 19. Mahala's 16th birthday on April 9. Is that right? Happy birthday. Okay. And today's refreshment provided by John's family and Johanna. Thank you, Johanna. 
uh, celebrating Marshall and Margie's 33 wedding anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. OK. Any other uh, Amco Sunday? Today is Amco Sunday, so those you want to uh, uh, financially donate to the Amco, then today is the really good Sunday to donate. And like I said, I mean, Amco operate under our apportionment, which means that the, the money you give for UMCOR is 100% used for disasters, not the administrative or anything like that. So if you want to donate to UMCOR, then that will the, just to, you know, remember that 100% will go to the disaster places. OK, thank you. And any other announcement? I forget. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna read it today. Huh? Yeah. Tubman's month of March is the Tubman Support Month. We don't. We're not gonna have the table in the social hall, but you can still donate uh, money for Tubman. So envelope, and then you can write on Tubman support, so that. You know, we can know, you know, we can support the Toberman. So month of March is the Toberman supporting month. Okay, church? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, my mind is still fogging, so. Okay. And we have a long sermon today, so I don't know. How, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to. Okay. Uh, request by Jane. Today would have been our 62nd wedding anniversary, Richard and Jane. <laughs> and Lucy called Bill this morning, right? This morning that Lucy is home, and doing very well, right? And uh, she's really appreciate all of you for praying for her, okay? I did it. And request by Yoli. Uh, United Methodist Women in Faith had a great successful event yesterday. Yeah, we had an amazing presentation about technology is helping our seniors. So that was really good. Thank you for Sally for a very informative wor uh, workshop. But after that, <laughs> Sally passed out, and then we had a, you know, rush to take him to ER. Yeah, that, that happened yesterday, and then she, she's home now. I got information that she's home now, and uh, please pray for her, okay? Any other prayer concerns? Please continue to pray for my parents. Uh, my dad is not doing well, so, you know, you know uh, please pray for uh, him, especially, okay? And any other prayer concern? Okay, let us pray. God, we need you. We need your presence. We need your healing. We need your guidance. God, every day, God, we hear this so much noise from the world. Make us really confusing, not knowing what to do, where to go. So God, help us to feel your presence so that we can clear out all the confusion and chaos that we have in our lives. God, you promised to us your presence, never-ending presence. So help us to feel your presence in this space, in this place. God, you have a plan for us, plan for our church, plan for our church families. Help us to realize that plan and help us to be the true church 
that you will please a church with helping each other, a church with loving and caring community, a church with pray for each other. God, we lift up to you this morning many of our church family members dealing with really difficult situations. You know all the details of it. Most of all, God, let them feel your presence, your healing, your guidance. God, really sometimes really hard to hear your voice, especially while we are in a stormy situation. It's really hard for us to hear you. So God, help us to open our heart and mind so that we can clearly hear your voice and clearly see your presence in our community. God, we gather here this morning to worship you and praise you. God, we really pray that you receive our praises, you receive our worship service, and help us to charge our lives with your spirit, with your message, so that we can confidently go out to the world with your spirit. Thank you for all the blessings and guidance upon our lives. So church, let us continue in prayer with a prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as trespasses as we forgive those trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. Ushers, come forward, please. We have John's family. Thank you.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of unwavering love, you have held nothing back in your love for us, not even your son. How we marvel at that kind of love and how we long to reflect a portion of that devotion back to you. As we dedicate our offerings to you, lead us away from our tendency to hold back and worry that there will not be enough. Help us to live as the people of love and abundance you have called us to be. In Christ we pray, amen. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses one through eight. I can't read that. I'm gonna open it here. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are continuing our journey, our Lenten journey, with purpose. We are referencing the book from uh, uh, Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life and Purpose Driven Church. And today we're talking about a fourth purpose for our lives. Fourth purpose. The main message is this. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. There. That's the message today. How God shape us so that we are able to serve God. That's the message. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. We were created to make contribution, not 
consume. God specially made, created you and me for a special purpose, to make the difference in our lives. What matters is not how long you live, but how we live. What matters is not the duration of your life, but donation of your life. The book said, on this planet, nobody gets free ride. Nobody gets free ride. Everybody should give something back. The Bible says we were created to serve. We were created to serve. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another. Let me say it again. Serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Serve. Your gift and talents are not just for your benefit. Your purpose in life is to be what God made you to be. God gave us, each one of us, gift and talents and ability and background, experience, all those things for the benefit of other people, serving others. That's the fourth purpose that we're going to talk about today. Serving God by serving others. The Bible says, serving God by serving others, there's a special word for it. Do you know what that is? It's called ministry. Ministry. Again, we have this misconception, misunderstanding of this word ministry. When I say word ministry, minister, most people think of good-looking Asian pastor, right? <laughs> Many people think that priests and pastors are the ministers, right? But ministry is simply means using sh my shape, to help somebody else in the name of God. In the name of God. That's a ministry. Anytime you use your talent, maybe you use your ability, you use your background, expertise, experience, whatever you have, helping somebody else in the name of God, that's ministry. So basically, we all are ministers. You are a minister. Not every believer is a pastor, but every Christian is called to be minister. That's what I'm going to talk to you today. Talking about your ministry using your gift and talents in the helping others in the name of God. Now, whenever God gives us an assignment <clears throat> to do something, God never gave it to us without equipping us first. Book of Job says, in Job chapter 10, verse 8 says, Your hands shaped me and made me. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. So today, I would like to talk about five things God used to shape us. Five I'm, talk, I'm telling you, this is going to be a long sermon. <laughs> Five. 
spiritual gift, heart, ability, personality, experience. All this together made the word shape. S-H-A-P-E. Spiritual gift, heart, ability, personality, and experience. Okay, so let's get on it. First, S stands for spiritual gift. Let me tell you clearly, God gave each one of us spiritual gift. You all have a spiritual gift to, for your ministry. When God created you and me, God gave us, bless us with us this special gift. But we often mistake misunderstanding of the meaning of the spiritual gift. We think that the spiritual gift is uh, something special, something ideal, something extraordinary, or something odd like future telling. But that's not spiritual gift. In book of Romans chapter 12, verse six to eight, today's scripture, it says this, we have a gift that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in the proportion of faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, encourager in encouragement, the giver in sincerity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Spiritual gift, all we have. Prophecy, people misunderstanding of the, the word prophecy. A lot of people think that prophecy is a fortune telling. But in the Bible says prophecy means say the word of God. Say word of God is the prophecy. We're doing all the time, right? Say the word of God, quoting from the Bible. That's a prophecy. Ministry, the teacher, exhorter, the giver, the leader, and the compassionate. All we have, these spiritual gifts that God has given us. All those gifts are very clear and concrete. Not odd, not nothing special. So unwrapping this spiritual gift is necessary, must, because an open, unopened gift is worthless. So talk about your spiritual gift. Just don't be afraid to say your own gift. Take some time to discern your spiritual gift. Your gift are to serve God through, through serving others. Your gift reveal the key to discovering God's will for your own ministry. Church, God has shaped us with a spirit, sp spiritual gifts to serve God by serving others. Let's move on to H. Okay, made progress. H for heart. Listen to your heart. As we serve God with heart, we have this enthusiasm, right? If we serve God with heart, then we have this joy. No one has to motivate you or challenge you, check on you, if you serve God with heart. You do it because you find the true joy and excitement as we serve God with our heart. So, I don't think we have to say much about this H, heart. So let's move on to A. A stands for abilities, abilities. 
God has shaped all of us, each one of us, not only with a spiritual gift and heart, but also with abilities. Your abilities are natural talents you were born with. I sometimes, you know, I'm so amazed by some people using these, like, a big words, you know. I'm not really good at with the words, but there are some people, really, naturally, they have a natural ability to speak, like, uh, you know, using fancy words. There are some people with uh, uh, athletic abilities, physical coordination. There are some people with uh, mathematics, music, mechanics, all this ability that you have. The ability you do have are the strong indication of what God wants you to do it in your life. When you look at your ability, you have to feel it, what God wants you to do. Your abilities were not given just to make a living. God gave them to you for your ministry. Most common excuses people give <clears throat> for not serving others <clears throat> is I don't have... People say, I don't have ability to offer. I don't have ability to offer. It's nonsense. You have it. If you're not involved in any service or ministry, think about what excuse you have it. But let me tell you this. Think about it. Abram was old. Jacob was insecure, Leah was unattractive, Joseph was abused, Moses was hot-tempered, Gideon had low self-esteem, Peter was impulsive, David was adulterer, J Eliza was suicidal, Jeremiah was depressed, Jonah was reluctant, Naomi was a widow, Martha worried a lot, the Samaritan woman had a several failed marriage. Zacchaeus was unpopular. Thomas had a doubt. Paul had a poor health. And Timothy was timid. Think about it. That's the quite unqualified people that God used. God used each one of us for his kingdom. God will use you and me. So stop making excuses. Many studies reveal that each person has like 500 to 700 different skills and abilities. So let's use them. Let's use to serve God by serving others. P, as a personal, uh, personality. P, as personality. God gave each of us different personality. We don't realize how truly unique each one of us Think about it, there are billions of people in the world, but no one is exactly like you. There's no good or bad personality, but great ones. Every time I come to this sanctuary, I look at these stained glasses. Think, look at that. Different shapes, different colors, and all put together. Beautiful, isn't it? That's a personality, our different personality for the ministry. You are different. I'm different. Difference is what God wants us to be to serve 
God by serving others. The last one, E, stands for experience. Experience. We have been shaped by our experience in life, most of which were beyond our control, right? Sometimes we experience bad things in life. If you really desire to be used by God, think about it. There must be, you must understand the powerful truth about your experience. The very experiences that you have resented or regretted most in life, which is the ones that you want to hide or you want to forget about it, those are the actually what God wants you to use it to help others. Those experiences that you want to hide, you don't want to talk about it, think about those experience, that's experience that God wants you to use it to serving God by serving others. Second Corinthians, first chapter, verse 4 says, God comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When others are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. You see? All the trouble times, all the experience that we had, we are able to comfort others when others get in trouble. So I read someone said, experience is not what happened to you. It is what you do with what happened to you. What will you do with that, all the things that you've been through, all the things that you experience? Please don't waste those valuable experience. Please don't waste the pain, the suffering that you had, maybe God wants to use it for the kingdom of God. So church, God has a special purpose for you and me. Special purpose serving God by serving others. The way that God shaped us will help us to accomplish this special purpose of serving God by serving others. That's for what we have trained, for that we have been shaped. So let's reclaim it. Let's reclaim this special purpose for you and me and for our community because we are in ministry. We are in ministry. God has given us this opportunity to serve God by serving others. As we continue on this Lenten journey, let's continue to claim this special purpose for our community. Let us pray. Loving God, we realize that we have been shaped to serve you by serving others. Help us to discern how you shaped us Help us to discern the way that we need to go with all the experience, all the abilities that we have. God, in many times, we put do not disturb sign on our hearts. 
So forgive us. Help us to see many of the interruptions we have in our lives. Help us to see those interruptions as opportunity to serve you by serving others. Thank you for the message and thank you for the challenging us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand? So church, we have this special purpose for you and me. God has a special purpose. So let's claim that special purpose as we go out to this world. Our God is with us, and our God is following our ministry. So let's go with it. Let's go with God, and let's go with the Holy Spirit. Our Father and the Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen.